Thank you. 
the untouchable God. You'll do the same today. The things that are untouchable in our lives that we hesitate to say, you'll touch those today.
explain him away. He is light, he is love, he is longevity, and he is the Lord. He is goodness and kindness and faithfulness, and he is God. He is holy, he is reverent. He is righteous and mighty and powerful and pure. His ways are right, his word is eternal and his will is unchanging, and his mind, it's on me, and it's on you. He's my savior, my God, my peace, my joy, my comfort, my Lord, and he rules my life. 
I serve him because he is so good to us every single day. I follow him because he is the wisdom of the wise. He's the power of the powerful. He is the ancient of days. He is the leader of all leaders, and he is good. His goal is a relationship with me. He will never leave me, never forsake me, never mislead me, never forget me, never overlook me, and he will never cancel my appointment in his appointment book. Never. When I fall, he's the one who lifts me up. When I fail, he's the one who forgives me. When I'm weak, he is the one who is so strong. When I've lost my way, he's the one who makes a way where there was no way. When I'm afraid, he's my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. And when I'm hurt, he helps me. When I'm broken, he mends me. When I'm blind, he leads me. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. When I face trials, he's the one who is with me. When I face persecution, he shields me. When I face problems, he comforts me. When I face loss, he provides for me. And when we face death, he's the one who will carry us home. He is everything for everyone, everywhere, and in every way. He is our God, and he is faithful. I am his, and he is mine. He is the Lamb of God, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega. He is the lover coming for his bride. He is the name that is above every single name. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we lift up your mighty name this morning, and we're in awe of you. Lord, we love you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Lord, you are our Father. Lord, you meet us right where we are, Lord. Lord, and today, this morning, right here, Lord, we praise you. We honor you. We thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you that you make a way when there is no way in our lives and that you care about every detail, Lord. Lord, a God that we don't understand because, because you're so big, because you're so omnipotent, Lord, but yet you come and meet us. Lord, we're in awe of you. Lord, we worship you, we honor you, we give you glory today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can I just say that this is kind of a hard job up here? <laughs> I knew, I knew this was coming. Like, I knew, you didn't know, but I knew that I was going to have to transition from that to announcements. Can I just, can I, can you just feel me for a minute? <laughs> we, I love you too. I love all of you. How, how was your night? Let's start with that. How was your night? Yeah? Good? You what? Oh, that's awesome. How many mamas out there got a good night's sleep? Yeah. Oh, I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I got about four hours because the night owl thing and the early bird thing, like how many of you did both? <laughs> Just me? 
You did both. Thank you, Lori. I see you. I see you. Okay, how many of you were night owls? Thank you for being here. I appreciate you coming back. Who, who won Nerds? Jackie Davis. Woo! She's feisty. You got to watch out. They asked me to join the table, and I'm like, no, no. I think you lose an arm in that game or something. I don't know. They, they got it going on. They're very competitive. And Mary was super excited because she's like, I got a whole new generation of nerd lovers or something. I don't know. Yeah, you did, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how many of you were early birds? <laughs> I see you, Ivan. I see you. <laughs> Ivan, did you join Olivia in the Bible study this morning? No, no. Okay, I don't know if that counts, Ivan. It, it counts, it counts. Okay. Uh, how was the early bird Bible study? Yeah? You talked about fierce reverence and our scripture. I love that so much. That's, I just love that. And th we had a crowd this morning, so yay. Uh, let's see, what else did you do? I will never forget, I have to bring it up probably every time, the Kragers sliding down the stairs at the hotel. Any of you wild and crazy like that last night? I did not see any pictures. I'm kind of disappointed. Like, if you did something wild and crazy, I didn't see you post it. That's what we're supposed to call. Did you post? You posted, I saw what you posted. You posted Mary Lee opening up the mystery bag. I thought that was wonderful. Like they did that, they bought a mystery bag, went to their hotel, opened it up on their bed and, and shared a video. It was wonderful. It was awesome. I didn't even pay you to do that. It was awesome. It was so great. What else? What else? You're, you're kind of quiet this morning. We got to wake up, wake up. If I can do this on four hours, you can do it too. Let's go. Come on. Come on. All right. I'm going to get to my announcements because it's not, I got to get off the stage. Okay. Uh, I thought you were going to give me some fun. Here's what we'll do. We're going to watch. We, we uh, captured another one of your husbands. And here's a little tip for you. Sometimes I get sent out with a shopping list and my wife's like, do you want me to explain that to you? And I'm like, I think I can handle it. And then I get to the grocery store and I'm like, what is a shallot? You know what I'm saying? How many avocados is avocados? Like if I mess that up, are we gonna be eating guacamole for the next week? Apples, cinnamon, shit take mushrooms, that's a little rude. Tomato sauce, dill weed, what, what aisle is that in? Milk, that's, that's way too vague. Okay, in my house, we go through stuff like oat milk, soy milk, rice milk, coconut milk, almond milk, every kind of milk. The only kind of milk we don't drink is milk. Okay, I don't, I don't even know what milk tastes like anymore. How do you milk an almond? I, this is gonna take me an hour and a half to find all this stuff. I should have asked more questions. Okay, thanks, bye. So when you ask if they have questions, they really do. You just, yes, they really do. Okay, that's our tip for this morning. Uh, we have a few hashtags to show you from Yes, look at those lovely ladies. I love it. Oh, yay, woohoo! Hashtagging, I love it. Don't forget to hashtag your pictures because we are going to use them. So be sure and hashtag them at BloomComp 2024. We love all of them. It makes me so happy to go home after Bloom and it's over and I'm like, oh, it's already over. And I see just my feed is just full of Bloom pictures. I love it. So post your pictures. Next year, I want to warn you, next year, I found this cool QR code where you guys can upload the pictures. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. That hashtag video, I, I'm not trying to like, I feel like woe is me this morning, but that takes me hours, ladies, to hunt you all down, find all your hashtag pictures. Next year, you're going to do it for me. Isn't that awesome? I'm just telling you. I know. I'm so excited about technology sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. Uh, we have some great things in the foyer. How many of you did uh, a But God testimony on the shell? Oh, man. I want to do a video of that. I was inspired I went and read some of them last night, and I'm just like, oh, I love it. If you haven't done a But God testimony or you want to claim one, will you write it on the shell and put it in the sand? We really, really want to do that. We're going to take a picture at the end, maybe a video. And how many of you got your scripture in a bottle? Are those the coolest little bottles? I know, they're just awesome. They're just awesome. I, we have such an amazing team. I'm going to talk about that later. But I mean, I got the bottle. I'm like, this is it. I thought we were going to get little tiny, you know, it's a full on bottle. You could put milk in that. Soy milk, almond milk. Okay, what else we got? 
our resource table. I, I said this last night, and there's a bunch of great prayers. I don't know. You know, I told you that there was the prayer about stress at the work. It was the only prayer left last night. I was like... I thought you'd all be running to get that. Like, I was going to post it all over myself. But anyway, there's a whole bunch of prayers there for you to grab. Please grab a post-it note or 12 of them, however many. We are still restocking that. We bought a ton for you to take home, and you just take one, and then you stick it on your mirror, and you get to see it every single day. So we want you to do that. Those are there for you. Please do that. How many of you have taken a picture at the photo booth? Was Isn't that amazing? That photo booth? It's awesome. Like, I just want to I just feel like I'm at the beach. And our store ladies, woo! They rock, they rock. I heard, I heard that you really like our sweatshirts this year, which is awesome. And we've run out of a few sizes and that makes me sad. So we are going to, I warned the store ladies, so don't worry about them when I say this. I, we're going to do another order. Um, and, and the store has agreed to that. We're going to do another order. So if you would like a sweatshirt and you didn't get one, please go to the store and give them your name and number. And I will be calling you. So just give your name and number and we're going to get you a sweatshirt. Okay. Um, we have our ASL interpreters and I would just want to say thank you again. Like... <laughs> This is so dear to our heart that we would be able to invite anyone, anyone that gets to come in. We had heard, you know, that there isn't a lot of events that you can come to um, if you can't hear. And, and that just breaks our heart. We want to have that. And so, but we have to have a yes. And we have two interpreters here today and all weekend long that are interpreting the whole conference. So can you help me thank them because they're working so hard. and. The, I'm in awe of what they do. I, so it's awesome. Um, let's see. Okay. I, I, okay, I guess it is on my thing this time. That Could I have our Bloom team stand up? They're amazing. They're amazing. I, I cannot tell you the thousands of hours that goes into this. The details that the Lord puts in 24 hours to me is just crazy crazy. He loves details. Can I say that? He loves details. And he could out detail us in a second, but they, all these ladies get this vision in different areas and it all comes together so beautifully. And I'm just, I, I feel like I get a ton of like recognition and stuff just because I think I'm the one up here, but these ladies are really the ones that do all of the amazing work and their yes makes this possible to partner with the Lord to bring forth his vision. So thank you. Thank you, Bloom team. I love you. The other team I want to thank, can I have our prayer team stand up? I know you're up front at the end, but can I have all our prayer teams? These ladies pray for you for months, months. And the last couple weeks of the event, there's a topic every single day that they are battling on your behalf. Because can I just be honest? It's a battle. It's a battle that the enemy doesn't want you to be here. Like we are gaining ground this weekend. Can I just claim that? I'm going to claim that. Like we are storming the gates of hell and we are taking back the land that the enemy has taken this weekend, this weekend. And it doesn't happen just automatically. Like it is a plowing and a sowing. And I just want you to know that those ladies have poured their hearts and soul into it. So thank you so much. Uh, we, one last thing, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook. We have a brand new website that we're super excited about to try to get the information out to you. And uh, this afternoon at five, uh, Bloom 2024 page will open up. And those testimonies that you've seen, <laughs> those testimonies that you wish that your sister would have seen or your mother or your friend, they will be available. The four video testimonies, they will be available at five o'clock today. And then we will work our hardest because it's a lot of work. We will work our hardest to get those sessions up as soon as possible. And they're all going to be available on our website. So visit our website. It's bloomswomenevent.com. And I have one, I have one last thing that I felt like the Lord really wanted me to do. And uh, it's, a, it's a testimony out here that I feel like I just want in the audience. Um, and maybe it's just near and dear to my heart because I have a sister who is battling cancer. And I, what I wanted to do that I felt led to do this morning is to have every one of you ladies, if you're, if you're brave, if you're not, I had a calling one time when I had had cancer and I just wasn't brave enough to stand up. But if you're brave enough to stand up and say that you've had cancer, you battled cancer, you've survived cancer, 
Will you stand up? Will you stand up in the audience? Will you be brave enough? Will you be brave enough? I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to, I want to just, I want to pray over you. I, um, whether you are, you know, have beat cancer or in the middle of beating cancer, like I just, there's ladies all over the room with testimony in that. And so Lord, we, we thank you that you, you, you are a God of healing. Lord, you are a God, Lord, that died for us. It says, by your wounds we are healed. And so, Lord, we claim that today. Lord, we command cancer to leave now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say it has no place in your daughter, no place in your daughter. Lord, and we just ask that you would meet everyone in this room, Lord, that's battled with cancer, that you would meet them right where they are, Lord, that you, that you would see them, that you know them, that you are right there with them, Lord, right in the battle. Lord, right in the victory. Lord, we claim a victory over cancer today in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was 17, I was involved in a car accident. It was a regular day with three friends, but I was driving way too fast. I came over a hill and hit another car turning in front of me. I was in and out of consciousness with glimpses of pain, blood, screams, ambulances, fear. These were the images and sounds that would go on to haunt me for many years to come. I had a concussion and was badly beat up and had a long recovery ahead. My friends were also injured. But the worst memory was of a policeman coming to my bed and telling me a little girl died in the accident. She was only 11. And like me, she was their only child. Sarah was her name. I couldn't bear the news. I immediately wanted to take her place. I didn't mean for this to happen. Why me? Why her? The next year was a blur of accusations and what felt like an assault on my character and my identity. When I finally got back to school, I was treated as an outcast, and people would say awful things to me, some with the purpose of being hurtful and some just out of ignorance. Even in the newspapers, they exaggerated things about me. Rumors began to grow. I felt like an outsider. I isolated with my tormenting thoughts while crying and growing in anger. I was charged with vehicular manslaughter and eventually charged, charged as an adult instead of a child. I was told I was being made an example of to our community. A year of court hearings, lawyers digging into my past, my school, and my family. I was finally convicted of vehicular manslaughter and a felony that would never leave my record. I received four years probation, two years without a license, many hours of community service, and also forced to talk to kids about the consequences of my actions and how it would have been prison time if I had been drinking or doing drugs, which I had been known to do. That was the hardest for me because I wasn't healed enough to talk about it yet. So I just sobbed as I spoke to these kids, and I felt quite incoherent. But I truly hoped it would save someone from the pain I had experienced and caused. It felt very unfair and mentally damaging at such a young age. At the same time, I felt it was important to try to punish myself for what I had done because of my feelings of rejection, guilt, shame, and everyone telling me what an awful person I was. I wanted to die. I knew it should have been me instead of this young girl. And I knew by her parents' remarks at the court hearings that they felt the same. Their words were more daggers of death that pierced my heart. I felt like a walking dead girl. My parents felt they had lost me as well. I had lost my hope in the future. I tried to jump out of moving cars while my mom was driving. I started punching walls and windows in rage. 
I burned my skin with cigarettes. I hit my head against walls. I wanted to feel the pain, but I also somehow wanted to numb it all. I began putting up walls between me and other people. I know the only reason I didn't commit suicide was because of the seeds that were planted in me as a child. I believed in Jesus, but I was hardening my heart. Instead of taking this horrible accident as a wake-up call to press into Jesus, I got even worse. I began to drink a lot and do all kinds of drugs to numb the pain and the flashbacks. The words I heard Sarah's parents and people say about me rang in the dark recesses of my brain. I became very lonely, isolated, angry, and unlovable. The dark poems I wrote, the songs I sang and listened to all just came into agreement with those negative feelings of death and destruction I felt. At 18, my father became ill, and I watched him slowly die for the next two years. I was so tired of sickness and death that I continued to hide in my addictions and depression. It seems I knew no self-control, and I was searching for love and approval through men. I tried to recover with counseling and medicines, but I didn't realize until much, much later that in the fog of the pain, I had made a pact with the enemy of my soul. I didn't realize I had come into agreement with anger, death, suicidal thoughts, punishment, unworthiness, and fear. No one around me knew how much of this was spiritual. The enemy isn't fair. He takes advantage of the pain if we let him. I spiritually made this little girl an idol and more important than my God, my life, and those still living. I've dealt with many issues over the years, including anxiety, depression, ADD, panic attacks, and PTSD. Most of my life, I would get panic attacks while driving, thinking, what if I hurt someone again? When my daughter was born, I was struggling with not feeling worthy of having her. Then, when she turned 11, the same age as Sarah was when she died, Fear came in, making me think I would lose her too. But God showed me that she was born in the same month that Sarah had left this world. Because God is so good to make life from death. And that my daughter's name, Jaden, means God has heard. I was told I would never get off antidepressants because I've been on them for so long. But in my spirit, I heard the Lord speak a better word. I heard him say he would heal me. He did heal me, and I've been off antidepressants for many years now. He also healed my many addictions. I started to realize the bad habits and negative thought patterns were poisonous to my life. As I began to renew my thoughts with the Word of God and study books about renewing my mind, I began to heal. It took years to change my thought patterns, and as it began to change, I began to have a passion to serve my church. I served in kids and youth ministry and went to women's groups and gleaned from older women and prayer counselors. I broke off lies of the enemy, strongholds, and generational sin. I began to really grow and understand what it meant to be a servant of the Lord while learning how to love well and be loved and known by God. My heart slowly began to soften and heal. God began to speak to me and showed me that my name, Amanda, means lovable and worthy of love. And my deep ability to love had been stolen. The gift God had given me to love and encourage people stayed inactive for way too long. The enemy thought he had won, but I found freedom from the lies. I learned that suffering and weakness can make you closer to God if you allow it. Now I praise the Lord for this day, and I thank him constantly. When I wake in the morning, I thank him for the breath of my lungs and another day to speak life instead of death. I see that each step of faith that I take feels, that feels uncomfortable, like when I give my testimony, 
or speak a word to someone, God then pours out more of his strength and purpose, and it shakes the gates of hell on earth. Now I have great joy, empathy, and love for others because of my struggles, and I'm using it for the kingdom and his glory. The world called me guilty and unlovable. The Lord called me forgiven and loved. Psalm 118, 13 through 15 and 17. My enemies did their best to kill me, but the Lord rescued me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. I will not die. Instead, I will live to tell what the Lord has done. Woo! Woo! Come on! Let's go. That's what I got in my spirit. Let's go. Let's go. Amanda, can I just recognize you? Can I just recognize you and say thank you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being so vulnerable. Thank you for sharing your testimony with us. Oh, and I also did not get a chance to thank Marianne and Susie up here. Was that? It was awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> I, the minute Marianne starts that fiddle, I just like, I just have tears all the time, every time. Good thing she doesn't play it around me because I just ball all the time. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So... I'm super excited to invite up our next guest. Her name is Ashley Holden. Can I have you come up to the, yes. Ashley is a worship leader at uh, Sandpoint Life Church. Woo, can I get a, can I, New Life Church in Sandpoint, yes. We love, we love that church. They were one of our satellite churches during COVID. I love that so much. You guys, I love it. Um, she says that she has a huge heart for women and that she's on fire to bring others to God through motivation and coaching. Ashley, I'm so excited that you're here. And I want to recognize Maddie. Oh, Maddie's over here. Maddie Groom is going to accompany her on the keys when we get to the song. So you are not going to want to miss this. Ashley Holden and Maddie Groom. Hey, y'all. All right, so let's get to it. So I'm first giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Father, just uh, be represented in this moment. Less of me, more of you. All right, so July of 2018, uh, my husband and I and my daughter, we moved to Sandpoint, Idaho from Ocean City, Maryland. And um, we were just looking for a fresh start. I mean, we didn't really have any roots set down. All of our families back east, and um, my grandmother had passed, and I said, you know what? Let's just go out there. It's a beautiful place. The people are kind. Let's see where God takes us. So uh, after a while, we got settled, got into our jobs. In December of 2018, we found out that we were expecting. Praise the Lord. Now, this was super exciting because, um, baby, of course, right? But Previously in 2017, we had lost our son while I was five and a half months pregnant. Gave birth to him. Um, he was only alive for a couple of minutes, but I was rushed to the OR. Placenta would not come out, and he passed shortly after. So this was also very, very nerve-wracking for us. Um, but God... Um, also around the same time in December, I had found a lump on my neck. My neck had been aching, um, and luckily my aunt, who was in town for Christmas, said, honey, I don't want to scare you, but you need to go get that checked out as soon as possible. So the journey began. Let's fast forward. February 2019, lump is getting bigger. It's now navel, si uh, navel orange sized. Uh, they admitted me to Kootenai Health, and I was on IV antibiotics for a week. Lump would not go down. Uh, they did a needle core biopsy, inconclusive. They sent me home and said, we're going to watch and we're going to wait. Scary. Now, 
Psalm 37, 9 says, those that wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. April 2019, I find another lump right here under my arm. Belly's growing, still pregnant. I said, you know what? I had this feeling of internal doom that if I did not advocate for myself, that not only was I going to perish, but this baby was going to perish. They sent me to another doctor and said, we'll just see what they say because we can't really find anything. So sent me to Spokane to a breast oncologist uh, because from this lump, swollen, navely looking, um, and she said, it's not breast cancer, but I'm going to send you to another doctor who's an ENT who kind of works with oncology. Um, let's see what's going on with your lymph nodes. Quickly gets me in, <laughs> and he says, I am so sorry that this is taking so long. Now we're in June of 2019. So he gets me in for surgery, and uh, he takes a big group of clusters over here, and he says, we'll see what happens, but we're going to watch and wait. Now, three days later, it's the weekend, and I get a call. Now, you know when you get a call from a doctor, it's never good. Um, but that morning, I woke up, and I said, you know what? Something's about to shift. So uh, he calls, and he says, hey, we got your results. You have lymphoma. Now, we don't know what type of lymphoma it is. Um, but I'm going to send you to another oncologist who deals with blood cancers. I'm not sure if he knows how to deal with pregnant women who have cancer, uh, but we're going to watch and wait and see what happens. <laughs> so I meet with my doctor. He gets my port placed, go for surgery. Hallelujah. I go through three rounds of chemo while pregnant. We're going to watch and wait and see what happens because, God, you're the head of my life. These were my thoughts. You're the head of my life, and, God, I've already lost so much, so you've brought me through that, and if I have to give this child back to you to show others who you are, then that's what we're going to do. So fast forward, three rounds of chemo. I stop chemo two weeks before um, I have to give birth, give birth naturally to a beautiful baby girl. I don't know if her picture's up there. Her name is Adriana. So on August 21st, 2019, <laughs> that's my daughter, Addie. There's Adriana. <laughs> uh, she was born healthy, no issues. Hallelujah. So... We're still going to fight, though, because I'm still, I still have to finish this battle. He's brought me through this. He's going to get me to the end of it. So three more rounds of chemo. And on October 1st, I don't know if you have the video of my doctor. Actually, I have great news for you. Your cancer is all gone. You're in complete remission. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, I was so happy. Those that wait on the Lord will inherit the earth. God is so good. And I just wanted to share that because um, when you have a deep respect for Jesus, you will allow him to fight your battle. It's already done. But if you just press on, keep a good attitude, keep a smile on your face and know that he's ahead of you and he's already prepared a place for you, the rest is easy. So um, I wanted to have y'all worship with me for a second. This is not a moment that's solo, but um, if he's brought you through some things, I want you to worship with me. And if you're declaring in the prophetic that he is good and that he's going to bring you through whatever you're going through, I want you to worship with me as we sing this song. See now. 
so powerful. What a powerful thing God has done in your life. And a powerful, powerful testimony of his goodness. Thank you for leading us in that. Can we give her a, a show of our appreciation for what she has said? I am so excited to be able to introduce a friend. Um, she's a friend to me. Uh, we haven't actually known each other for very long, nevertheless. I count her as one of my friends because um, as I am getting to know her, I am realizing um, that she speaks truth. And we need friends that will tell us the truth. So I would like to call Jerusha Tanner to this platform. She is going to give us a word today. You're going to have so much to write down. Don't try to remember it, all right? It won't work. Just write it down. That's why you got those cute little journals. Shall we all take those out now? I mean, they've got little tabs. Please. They got sticky notes and everything. I mean, what woman doesn't like a good sticky note? Okay, enough about that. Um, Jerusha, uh, you've got, you're an avid reader, obviously. I mean, you like gave us 10 recommendations for books. Um, and this one, The Habits of the Household. Could you um, tell us about that book? So this gentleman who wrote this book, he's a lawyer. He has sons, which I identified with. Uh, but something that my husband and I are just realizing, if you want to be healthy, you need to have habits of working out and eating right. If you want to be healthy, you need to have habits of going to the doctor. If you want to be successful at work, you have to have habits that govern how you do work. I think sometimes it's easy to think that we can just love Jesus with no habits. And so... Um, the way he does them, how he does them, that's not the point. The point is he's inviting you into the story of how they've created habits for their household, where their lives circle around Jesus as king. And I love, I love how he writes. It's easy, but I also just love that there's other people out there who are starting to figure out if we want this life with Jesus to continue, we've got to create practices. So it's actually really easy to read, especially I want to encourage you if you're a young mom or you're about to be a mama and you have kids under the age of 10, this is a must read for you. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give this back to her, but um, I just want you to know that she is, she's a wife. She's a mom. She's a boy mom. Come on. She's a boy mom. Okay. I know there's some girl moms out here that don't get it. That's all right though. It's, it's fine. If you know, you know. Yes, exactly. Would you again welcome Jerusha Tanner to this platform? I love this woman. Is she not goals? Uh, I... Pastor Robbie, I love your spirit. I love your smile. I love your laugh. I particularly love how sensitive you are to the spirit of God and how you lead us in worship. It is a privilege to be in any room that you're leading in. I just, I honor you. I bless you. And I'm praying that God would take your life into a season of fruitfulness and abundance like you've never known. And I'm asking that God would expand your reach. He'd expand your influence and the gift of God that's in you would start to be seen not just in this community, but it would just start reaching further and further across the country and into the nation. So we bless you and we say your latter years are going to be better and more fruitful than even your beginning years. And your voice is going to go the distance. You're going to have one of those voices that you're going to be 80 and the strength of your voice is still going to be there because there's a roar in you that needs to be heard. So we bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, ladies, before we get started this morning, uh, can you sense it? There's, there's a special presence of God in this room. And I have a word burning in me for you. And I thought that maybe I was missing it during worship because there was such a sweet presence of the Holy Spirit in the room. And then Ruth's on her knees and I'm like, wow, I missed it. Okay, God, do you have something else you want me to say? And then she gets halfway up on her knees and she's literally like swaying on her knees. Did you see that? She's like in a fighting position on her knees, which we should be in a fighting position on our knees. And then she gets 
what's up? And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not missing that. And then they played the video. I'm calling the angels down. Come on, somebody. I'm storming the gates of hell. And I'm like, okay, the militant thing that's in me this morning might actually be for the room. Fierce reverence. I want to shift us a little bit this morning. Fierce reverence should take us someplace. And I believe this morning, mamas, and you might be like, I'm not a mom. I've never been a mom. Can I tell you, if you were created in the image of God female, you're a mama. Your kids might be spiritual, but you have a mothering anointing. And I'm calling us this morning, ladies, there is an anointing in this hour for fierceness out of mothers. I believe in this room, there's a militancy, there's a war, there's a spiritual battle. And I I just want to speak to a couple things prophetically. Your testimonies have just been amazing, but also, whoa, that in this community, you would have lives impacted by death in that way. Whoa. Sweet Ashley, beautiful story. What a story. What a contender. What a fierce mama, right? But also, whoa, then you have ladies stand in the room who've experienced cancer. Whoa. And then I was talking to my new friend, Lindsay, and she was telling me that they recently arrested a man in this area who was connected with ISIS, who was going to enter churches. Whoa. And I just, I think, ladies, that here today, the Lord wants to wake us up to the fact that there is a spiritual battle happening, that we're actually surrounded by darkness, and we're not supposed to just start getting used to the darkness and accepting the darkness, but in this hour, God is calling his daughters to wake up and step into their rightful place as warriors. Some of you are like, I'm not that kind of personality. Can I tell you, if your kid is right next to you and somebody is out to do your kid harm, you're not going to say, I'm not that kind of personality. (laughs) The next generation is standing right next to us and the enemy is out to do that generation harm. That enemy is so committed to his assignment against the next generation that he's getting people to question their gender identity. Why does that have impact? Because we were created to be fruitful and multiply. If boys are not being boys and girls are not being girls and the two coming together to create offspring, there's no multiplication. They're saying in my area that as many as 60% of kids are identifying as a different gender sexual persuasion. 60%. I'm telling you, there is an assignment against the next generation. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. Some of you are like, whoa, it is Saturday morning at a women's event. I want you to tell some jokes on guys. I want you to tell me that I'm loved, and then let's go eat lunch. I'm sorry, they brought in the wrong person for that. <laughs> I, I played, I was, I, was a fierce, I was a fierce child, my poor mother. Uh, but I played basketball, and I remember I was like one of those people who I just, I was determined. And if I thought something was possible, I would literally leave everything at that place. I would die to make it possible. And I would have friends who would come watch me play basketball, and they're like, we really think you're a good Christian, but when we watch you play basketball, it's like this different side of you comes out, and you don't seem as Christian to us. And then they're like, and then you do this thing when you're like really intense where you're like, or I'll do this. 
And then they told me I was gonna bite my tongue if something bad happened and I quit. Ladies, this is my game face tonight, today and I'm gonna regret that I'm putting this on a camera, but right now, even in the spirit, I feel this. I feel even in the spiritual atmosphere of this area that the enemy has assignments against the church, that the enemy has assignments against the daughters of Christ, that the enemy has assignments against some of you in this place. And I'm here to tell you that that same fierce reverence that we're calling you to, that that jealous God who's burning for you and wants all of you, he actually also wants more than just you. He wants the entire community. He wants the entire state. He wants the entire country. And he's actually put you and I in very specific places to be fierce warrior mamas who'd like Rebecca, go and inquire of the Lord what's going on and realize that God wants to get the promises of God to Jacob and we work and we contend to get those promises from one generation to the next. We are those who are supposed to stand between the gap of those who've gone before us and those who've gone after us and we're supposed to say, on my watch, the promises are getting passed down. On my watch, the promises are getting handed down. I believe I have one mission on this earth to love Jesus with everything I've got, to be loved by him, and to do my part to get the promises of God passed on to the next generation. And I'm not just talking my kids, that's part of it. And ladies, I'm calling to us today. Consider me a prophetic mama voice saying, now is the time for mothers to awake and arise. Hear me. I'm not saying now is the time for women to awake and arise. Can I tell you? We've seen where the feminist movement of women awaking and arising gets us. It gets us here. And it is time for mamas to awake and arise. People who understand that you don't take power. You step into places that God has created for you to step into, and you just have power. <laughs> Too many women are trying to take authority and power. Can I tell you, people of true authority and power never take it. They just have it. Some of us need to get into the secret place. Some of us need to develop practices. Some of us are praying for people, and we don't even pray at home. Can I just be honest for a minute? You guys are like, you haven't not been honest this entire time. <laughs> if you're up here, and I'm up here praying for people, and we haven't spent hours in the secret place with God praying, Get your hands off of your sister. We don't practice prayer here. We practice prayer in the secret place. You want authority in prayer? I'll give you the secret. Pray when no one's watching. You want authority in worship? Worship when no one's watching. You want to be a preacher? Study when no one's watching. Prepare sermons nobody ever hears. Ladies, today is the day. It's time for some fierce mamas to arise. Will you turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 20? And we're going to look at one such fierce mother. I'm a little bit irreverent. Anybody else in the room a little bit irreverent? And I really wanted to call this sermon like a mother. And... My, my assistant was like, you can't do that. But wouldn't have that been such a good title? I'm gauging the room right now to see who's glaring at me. Okay, half the room's in, the other half is like, she's never coming back. This is what you get for bringing somebody back a second time. 
So I want to set up the context of the story we're looking at. King David has just returned to Jerusalem. He's been chased by Absalom out of Jerusalem. He, he's running for his life. It looks like he's not going to be king, but God has King David's back. Absalom ends up dead. It's a wild story. His hair gets caught in a tree. Then they kill him with clubs. It's wild. Not a good story. King David comes back to Jerusalem, right? Yay. Everybody should be so happy. Victory. He's won. No. Israel's upset that King David's back because they wanted Absalom. And so this guy named Sheba, evil Sheba, decides, I don't want King David king, so I'm going to start a rebellion, a revolution. And so he gets people up in arms against David and flees Jerusalem. And obviously, King David and Joab are like, we cannot have division in the kingdom, so go pursue him. So they send this other guy to pursue the evil Sheba, and when he gets to the evil Sheba, he joins them. Can I just tell you, if someone who is a disunifying person, if someone who is negative, if someone who is offended has somebody you also know join their ranks, you should avoid both of them. Obviously, we don't trust negative, divisive people. You know what? We should be very careful to trust friends of negative, divisive people. So anyways, David, King David and Joab are like, okay, we're going to send Joab. Joab is going to go get this guy, find out why he delayed, what's going on. He gets there, finds out this guy has joined King, uh, Sheba. He stabs him in the side because any story in the Bible involving Joab has him killing someone which is interesting to think about, right? What does that say about King David, that his best friend is always killing people? I don't know. The Bible's complicated. Amen, ladies, especially the Old Testament. And so then Joab's like, okay, I'm going to go pursue this evil Sheba. And the evil Sheba had made his home base a city named Abel. And he was hanging out there. So Joab takes his little army, he takes his men, and he comes to this city of Abel. And the Bible says he builds a ramp up the city walls so that he and his army can run up that ramp and attack. And this is where we meet the wise woman of Abel. It says in verse 16, 2 Samuel 20, 16, if you have your Bibles, you should open your Bibles just because a phone is not as good as the actual paper word of God. I know it's unpopular to say that, but we need to go old school when it comes to the word of God. Can I just take a pause here? In the mornings, don't get on your phone. Don't read the Bible on your phone. If it's all you have, great. And go talk to a pastor and say, can I get a paper Bible? Because God wants you undistracted when you encounter him. But anyways, verse 16, a wise woman called out from the city. She said, listen, listen. Doesn't that sound a little bit like the book of Proverbs? A wise woman calling out, listen, listen. May God make each one of us wise women so that when we speak, people listen. God, forgive your daughters when we have used our power that was supposed to be persuasive to manipulate, to control, to be negative. Jesus, we're asking for forgiveness now, and we're asking for even in this room a wisdom to drop on words in the mighty name of Jesus. Please tell Joab to come here and let me speak with him. When he had come near her, the woman asked him, are you Joab? And he said, yeah. And she says, listen to the words of your servant, she said. And he said, I am listening. The first thing I want us to see about this wise woman of Abel is she is watching over her city. The thinking is she's a political councilwoman. She has respect, but she's watching over her city because she knows that the enemy might want to attack. The Bible says that God put Adam and Eve in the garden to watch and keep it, to tend and keep it. What are they watching for? They were supposed to be watching for a serpent who was making his way into the garden trying to tempt them to eat things and do things they weren't called to do. And what happened? happens. 
the serpent makes his way into the garden and indeed they eat the fruit. And here we are, ladies, we have periods now thanks to that. (laughs) Do you know the first thing that a wise, fierce mama is supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be watching for where the enemy's trying to get into our city. When I look at the world, you know what it makes me think? Whoa, God, I haven't been doing my part. Because when I look at what's happening in the world, there's a lot of serpents who've gotten in. And they're pulling a generation away from the church. They're pulling people away from you. And I believe, ladies, that in this hour, God is calling you and I back to the occupation of watching. Some of us need to be getting up early in the morning and watching. Some of us need to be watching what's being watched on TV in our homes, the kind of music that's being listened to, what's being watched on phones. Some of us need to adopt an attitude because the future of a generation depends on this group of women taking up their place, watching over their home, watching over their church, watching over their state, watching over their city, watching over their country because the enemy is roaring like a lion and he is going to get in unless some women say, hey, listen, you don't just get to walk into my home. You don't just get to walk into my city. You don't just get to have your way here. Listen. Have you seen that video? Listen, Linda. Listen. Turn to your sister and say, listen, Linda. Listen. Are you ready? This story is going to get nuts. Are you ready for nuts? Verse 18. She said in the past, they used to say, seek counsel in Abel. And that's how they settled disputes. I am one of the peaceful and the faithful in Israel. But you're trying to destroy a city that is like a mother in Israel. Why would you devour the Lord's inheritance? And I want us to see this. Here is a mother calling to Joab saying, don't destroy this city. Not only does this wise woman, does she watch, but she wars for what belongs to her. There's this story in the Bible. It's one of the best stories ever. There's this woman. Her name is Deborah. She's a prophet. She's also a wise woman who hangs out under a palm tree. I think that's a good occupation. And people come to her and they seek her wise counsel and she gives it. And while she is the judge in Israel giving this wise counsel like the woman of Abel, During that time, the whole nation of Israel is under the oppression of a country that has 900 chariots, and for 20 years, they are under this enemy's attack. And she gets a prophetic word from God because she's a watcher. And God says, now is the time that I'm going to give you victory over that country, and you're going to be freed from their oppression. So she goes to Barak, the commander of the army, and she says, now's the time. Get up. Let's go have victory. And Barak's like... Uh, only if you go with me. And she says, okay, I'll leave the palm tree. Let's go win God's battle. So they go and they defeat the entire military army except for one guy escapes on foot. And he heads to a tent of a woman named Jael. If I would have had a daughter, just so we're all clear, her name would have been Jael. And she would have had a tent peg theme room. (laughs) And she says to this guy, hey, you must be tired. Because she's watching. She's watching for the enemy. She sees the enemy come into her house and she says, here's some milk. Take a nap. And while he is sleeping, she takes a tent peg. Have you ever been camping? This is not a little nail. And she takes it, and she takes a hammer. This is the greatest story. (laughs) And she puts it to the temple of his head while he's sleeping, and she hammers it in, and she kills him in a moment. 
And then there's victory. And Deborah begins to sing her song. And in her song, she says this, that the cities were desolate. The cities were destroyed until Deborah arose, a mother in Israel. Some of you want to pick this up. Some of you are annoyed because you just want to be reverent. Ladies, there's a generation hanging in the balance that's waiting for some wise women. There are some cities that are desolate. My city is desolate. My state is desolate. I'm not a pastor. I'm a missionary. But can I tell you, my city is not desolate and done because there's a mother named Jerusha in that city. My friend Carrie is here. There's a mother in that city named Carrie, and we understand our assignment. Our assignment is to arise in this hour and to war. I want peaceful, sweet church. So do I, I think. But I also want to make sure that the link isn't broken and the promises of God get passed on to the next generation. And there's a guy named Joab who's trying to make his way into my city and destroy my city that happens to be a heritage of the Lord. What's a heritage? An assignment. Oh, now we're preaching. It's a portion. Ladies, can I tell you, every single one of us in this room has an assignment. And the enemy wants to take out our assignment because if he takes out our assignment, he takes out everything that comes after us. You know my number one assignment? To be an amazing wife to my husband. Do you know my husband goes and does his assignment every single day? That's to go into the community and heal people, bring safety. There's times that my husband has been on calls where people are getting ready to jump off something and commit suicide, and my husband is praying in the spirit, and God directs him to say the right things, and that person got off of the ledge and ended up getting the help they needed. What is my husband doing? His assignment. But if I'm not being the wife I'm supposed to be to him, He doesn't go into the world the way he's supposed to go into the world. Do you know what else my assignment is? My sons. There's nobody else who can be the mother to my sons that I can be to my sons. You know what else is my assignment? My church. You know what else is my assignment? You here today. I've been praying for you. I've been asking. I've been saying, God, like I was talking to my good friend Ruth, she was saying, you have an impartation gift. You know what I've been praying all morning? I'm saying, God, the the warring spirit that is in me, the mother arising spirit that is in me, I'm asking that it would be imparted into the room because there is a generation that needs mothers to arise and war in this hour. My oldest son was diagnosed with profound dyslexia. They told me he's not going to read till he's a senior in high school. I said, that's dumb and stupid. I don't care that you have a degree. And I started warring for my son. I found a program that did things no other program did. It was too much money. I couldn't afford it. I talked insurance into paying for it. My son in three months went from not being able to read to being able to read above grade level. I just bought, he reads all the time. I just bought him a book this thick. (laughs) Ladies, that's not me being awesome. That's me being a Deborah. That's me being a JL and saying, I'm going to war for the destiny of my son, and I'm not going to accept what other people say his future is, because my son is my assignment, and he belongs to God. And what God says about him is very different than what doctors and psychologists say about my son. See, some of you in here have been accepting as truth 
what the enemy has been declaring over your assignment. And I'm here to tell us today, ladies, that the voice of God is speaking. And he's saying, it's time for you to arise and war for your heritage, war for your assignment, and say, not on my watch. No more enemy, you don't get to sneak into my garden. No more enemy, you don't get to sneak into the church. No more enemy, this is my house. Listen, Linda, listen. (laughs) You're welcome, you're gonna be saying it for days. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? It just gets better. Isn't this a great story? Why does nobody ever preach this story? Because it gets a little violent. Okay, here we go. Verse 20. Never. I would never devour or demolish. That is not the case. There is a man named Sheba from the hill country who has rebelled against King David. Deliver this one man and I will withdraw from the city. The woman replied to him, watch. His head will be thrown over the wall to you. Who is this lady? Oh my goodness, if you're in here and you're pro cutting off the enemy's head, raise your hand. Okay, the rest of you are like, that is so violent. Right? What? I just heard about a pastor who recently, like, he was trying to be creative and he did a sermon in a youth group where he cut off the head of a lamb and didn't fully think it through. And there was, like, blood everywhere. Kids were triggered. They were freaking out. So you're welcome. I'm not going to demonstrate it. So then, get this. The woman went to the people with her wise counsel. Somebody needs to hear this. And they cut off the head of Sheba and they threw it to Joab and he blew the ram's horn and they dispersed from the city. A wise woman said, stop, listen to me, don't enter my city. Then she says, I'm going to war for my city. And then she goes to her community and says, hey, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut off that guy's head. Somebody back me up here. I think that if I'm at a staff meeting next week, I'm like, guys, hey, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> well, I don't, that guy, he's a weirdo. Let's cut off his head. They would stone me, Right. But this woman has such weight to her words. God, will you restore the weightiness to women's words? That they said, okay, if you say so, let's do it. They cut off his head. They throw it over the city walls. And she wins. Hmm. Some of you in here have started to believe a lie that you are nothing, that you are no one, and that the life and the legacy that you have been given cannot shift and change. And I'm here to tell you today that you have the mind of Christ. And even right now, God wants to come to the way you think and the way you see yourself. And he wants to declare over you, you are a winner. It sounds cliche. But do you know, we listen to weighty words from people who believe They're winners. Do you know what's hard to hear? People who are insecure, who don't even believe themselves what it is they're saying. May God in this room today heal second class thinking. May God come into this room and may he restore his daughters to their rightful place of authority and power. May he come and give them the power to declare what is allowed into the house 
and what has to stay out of the house. I do not think it's coincidence. This woman would have been a contemporary of King David. She's living at the time of King David. She could have said a lot of different things. We'll kill him. Don't worry about it. You'll never see him again. Don't worry about him. But she says something very specific. She says, we will cut off his head. There was a little shepherd boy. He was a nobody, but he thought he was a somebody. And he ended up at a battle. And at this battle, there was a big, huge giant trying to get into God's house, trying to destroy God's heritage, trying to destroy God's future kingdom. And he said, hey, you don't get to talk that way. We belong to God. And he takes a stone in a slingshot, much like our ladies were doing earlier. <laughs> slight difference, slight. I was impressed they could do it, honestly. And he takes the slingshot and he begins to swing it over his head. And that stone goes flying into the enemy's forehead. And he falls down to the ground. Boom, down goes the giant. And David walks over and he takes out a sword. This is gnarly stuff. And he walks over and he cuts off the giant's head. I don't know, there's like bone in necks. I'm not, this is really a violent sermon and I did not mean it for it to be. I'm so sorry. But I'm just picturing, I don't think it's really, like you gotta do that just right, right? You gotta hit it just right. And David hits it just right and off goes the giant's head. And I don't think it's coincidence that this lady is like, we're gonna throw his head over the wall because I think she's letting Joab know. This is a King David moment. We're facing a big Goliath, but this is what God does to his enemies. He says, off with their head. <laughs> Ladies, there is a fierce mama anointing arising in this hour if we want it. There's a grace to watch. Some of you have abdicated your role of watching and stuff has gotten into your home. There is an anointing to war. You're not supposed to be cute and nice. You're supposed to be cute, nice, and fierce. <laughs> and can I give you the best news? There's an anointing to win, and God wants the gap that's been between the generations, you and I, to step in, fill that gap, and say, in my day, in my time, in my story, during my assignment, the promises of God will get passed on to the next generation. That is facts. Will you stand to your feet? Will you put your hands on your eyes? May you be anointed to watch fresh spirit of discernment falls in this room. A prophetic anointing falls in this room. A seer anointing falls in this room. You're going to even see things that your kids, your grandkids, your nieces and nephews are struggling with, and you're going to begin to. Now, I want both hands in the air in a militant position, fists made to war. And right now, I'm asking that the spirit of the wise woman of Abel would descend in this room. That mothers would arise like Deborah and Jael in this hour. I'm asking right now that even in prayer times, that a war cry would come from your prayer closet. Let the warriors arise. Let the mothers arise.
We even speak to the coming election. It does not impact the future of the next generation because even in this hour across this country, mothers are beginning to arise and there is war in their mouth and in their hand. And we declare right now, you are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are first class, baby. You are top tier. You were created to win. You were created to thrive. You were created for your destiny and your heritage to be passed on for the generations. And so I prophesy over your minds, you have the mind of Christ. Go win, ladies. Listen, Linda, listen. Listen. 